Hello folks, I wasn't planning on putting a video out this week, but I just saw this news drop and I'm a bit baffled by it all. So I'm gonna try and break this down into good things, bad things and downright weird things. Let's do a practice run. We've got some new iPads, good. They still run iPadOS, bad. And it's becoming increasingly impossible to choose which iPad is right for you, weird. Let's go. So yesterday, Apple very unceremoniously dropped a selection of new iPads that are due for release very soon. There's a new base iPad, there's also a new iPad Pro in 11 and 12.9 inch formats. And you might ask, why didn't they get a big fanfare or much of a feature at an event? And having looked at the details, I can see why maybe Apple wanted to keep this low key. It's all a bit baffling. So let's start with the brand new 10.9 inch iPad. That's just an iPad, by the way, not Air, Mini, Pro, just an iPad. And that in itself is a bit confusing, right? So imagine you didn't really know your tech that well and you walked into a shop saying, I'd like to buy an iPad. There are so many options to choose from and so many different variations. You probably just end up walking back out again. I think they should just call it what it is. It's the iPad SE. It's the most basic edition of an iPad you're likely to want. It's great for kids, great for older generation who wanna stay connected but don't need a full-fledged computer. Anyway, this new model comes in a range of four funky new colors. Good. I personally really like the blue option. And then look at this. There's a brand new iPad keyboard case. This is called the Keyboard Folio. Another good. This is big news as it's the first time they've released anything like this since the Magic Keyboard. And it has function keys. So it looks super flexible and it allows you to have your iPad in multiple orientations and even just remove the keyboard part. So I've owned the Magic Keyboard now for a few years now since its release. And whilst it's okay, this is actually the keyboard I was looking for. Anyone I know who uses an iPad as a daily driver or a second screen wants to be able to switch from drawing to typing to scrolling in a heartbeat. And this keyboard looks like it hits all the right notes. Well done, Apple. Although it is $250. I think that's in the bad column. Now this was the last iPad to have a round little fingerprint sensor at the bottom, but they've got rid of that now. So you've got this full edge to edge design and they've moved the fingerprint sensor up to the top of the iPad on the button, which is a good choice. Obviously this is a design move which mirrors many of the other iPad models. Now there's also quite a bit going on with the cameras in the new iPad. There is a rear facing 12 megapixel camera, which is capable of shooting 4K video and then front facing the camera has actually moved to the top bezel which is better for video calls when in landscape i think this is a really good choice actually i think this is a brilliant idea and it's just a bit odd that they would choose to introduce such a radical and innovative design choice into their most basic ipad model i'm gonna pop that in the weird column anyway moving on and i honestly can't believe they even showcase this so this iPad only supports Apple Pencil first gen. Yeah, that's the one where the tip comes off and you have to stick it into the charging port to charge. Except in this case, it's a bit more bonkers because this iPad has USB-C charging. So if you wanna use an iPad Pencil, which they made quite a big deal of, you have to use an extra adapter to charge it in this mad way. This was a bad call for Oaks, really bad. That's going in that column. So let's get on to the next gen pros. And next gen in this case means M2 processors. And yes, there's a processor in these machines that is the same as runs in the full blown MacBooks. I'm gonna put this in the weird column because I'm currently running an 11 inch iPad Pro from 2018 with a pre M1 processor and it is no slouch. In fact, it steams through absolutely anything I've ever thrown at it. I can't even begin to imagine what you'd need to put an iPad through to tax an M2 or even an M1 chip. So the use cases put forward in this video are doctors, architects and photographers. And to be honest, I can only think of photographers wanting to use this on the go as a machine for editing. And even then you probably also want a proper MacBook or a dedicated photo editing machine editing on a big screen. So if you're in one of those groups, let me know in the comments, do any of these use cases speak to you? Are you planning to use all of the benefits of an M1 or an M2 iPad Pro? And then here comes the big use case, content creation on an iPad Pro. And if you're filming with this next gen iPad Pro, you can film in ProRes, which is great. And interesting that they chose that label, content creators rather than filmmakers. You know why? Because I think filmmakers will be using a camera rig and probably wouldn't be caught dead doing something like this. This just looks really bizarre to me and just makes me think of seeing tourists with iPads held aloft taking photos. 
Nothing about this looks normal, and so this is off to the weirder column. So I think ProRes is a cool upgrade, but it seems to be making the iPad Pro a tool that's in need of a purpose. And then there's a big deal made out of iPad OS 16, which is fine, but you know, it's still iPad OS. When I first heard they were putting M1 and M2 chips in an iPad, I thought this was gonna herald a brand new era of tablet computing, but no, we're barely even there when it comes to properly supported external displays. And even then, it's all held back by iPad OS. The file system is okay, it's better than it was, but it's not where it needs to be when it comes to transferring large files about. And look in this shot, how clunky Stage Manager is, even in a glossy promo. But you know, hey, at least it supports Apple Pencil, and that's the second generation Apple Pencil, the one that 99% of people actually want to be using most of the time. And the Apple Pencil even gets some new features such as the precog-like hover really good. And yeah, even though this is a pro model designed to be used in the most laptop-like way of any iPad, they've kept the camera orientation exactly as it is. The innovative move of making this landscape camera available that's available in the base level iPad doesn't come across to the pros. Now my guess here is that this is because the magnets and connectors that charge the Apple Pencil second gen are in the way, but this seems odd, no? And for now, there is no keyboard update for the Pro iPads. The ones that we can see featured here in the video are the Magic Keyboards, which date back quite some years now. Now we know there is a new Magic Keyboard on the way, according to some patents, but, but why not just wait a minute and release the new iPad Pros with a rehomed landscape camera and maybe a cool MagSafe kind of charging case. Honestly, I think annual product releases have got a lot to answer for iPad Pro is so far ahead, there's nothing else like it. Well, yes, except the iPad Air, which to be fair is a lot like it. And to be honest, it's probably the iPad that most people should buy in 2022. As for me, I'm really hoping that the little iPad mini gets a display bump and is just brought up into line with some of the other iPads in the range. And I will be definitely downgrading from my 11 inch iPad Pro in the future. And looking at this lineup and price differential, it really is a very odd set of options. It might even be Apple's most bizarre product lineup yet. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're feeling cheeky, maybe even drop a little like. And if you'd like to see more like this, go on, maybe even a cheeky subscribe. I'll see you next time.